Hi everyone, my name is Marcus, this is Cam, and you're watching the Great Nerd YouTube channel. So today, another special guest, we're here with Cam from Gallery Aquatica in a lovely Brisbane. Perfect day, perfect weather, so we thought we'd sit outside, do a little bit of an interview, and let's talk about a little bit of the story of how it all came to be, and yep. the, the growth of what is probably Australia's most recognisable brand in the local fish shop scene. I guess we should probably start with uh, how the shop came about. And really the, the shop uh, started on the back of my original maintenance business. And so I've been doing aquarium maintenance for years and years and years, and I've worked at a variety of aquarium stores. Um, and I guess just having the uh, top end uh, marine customers, that sort of gave me a bit of a, a springboard to opening up the shop. I had a, a ready-made clientele to uh, basically sell coral and fish and aquarium products too straight away. So that was really where the, the shop came about. Uh, in terms of the YouTube channel, um, that really just was something we planned to do from the start. Um, Anya and I had spoken about it uh, years and years ago and uh, at one point we just uh, decided to do it and we had uh, Adam who's been you know great helping us with the production and the filming and everything and, and he's really taken on board the project and uh, from there, so yeah. it's been good. So I, I know both you and Anya have bachelor degrees in science. Uh, well, I've always been interested in animals in general, but certainly aquatic animals, marine animals. Uh, started for me with crayfish uh, when I was yeah. just a kid, and certainly um, that passion has developed. And uh, doing the degree, so it's a science degree majoring in marine biology. It was really something that I was always going to do just based on my love of uh, and passion for that sort of thing. Uh, and I never really had in mind that it would one day be something that was very handy in my career. Of course, we learned so much. What I really focused on at uni was parasitology is one of the, the best fields that I could possibly have started with what we do because we're dealing with parasites uh, on a daily basis, uh, marine protozoa, um, uh, marine flukes, you know, things like that. So. Yeah, it's been, it was a really good course uh, to do and it, it helps me every day, to be honest. Fantastic, yeah. I, and I, I think it's just really good to, to see like people pursuing what they're passionate about, building their businesses around it, and, and then, you know, in, investing so much in the hobby. In the last 20 years, the increase in the technology uh, that has allowed fish keeping, and marine fish keeping in particular, to become easier and easier uh, yeah. is great. And, and the, the combination of the, the uh, you know, the market wanting to keep aquariums and the increase in the ease of doing it, uh, it's, a, it's a sure thing that it's going to, and there's a lot of space in uh, the industry for, for more players, more shops, and there's, and every day there's more and more hobbyists, so it's a, you know, you know, it's a growing industry, and it's good. I mean, it's, it's so much exciting stuff happening at the moment, like we're seeing the transition of um, the coral part of the industry moving more and more into fragging, I know you guys. I'll show some B-roll footage of the amazing frag that you guys have at the propagation efforts that you've been doing. And and one of the things that we've really sort of focused on is the propagation. Um, for partly because uh, you know we see what what's happening in other countries that don't have the easy access to wild coral, and so it's inevitable that our, our market will follow that. And I like to think about uh, where the hobby is going to be in 20 years' time. And at some point, it's inevitable that we're not going to be collecting wild corals, be it due to you know, environmental uh, pressures on the environment or uh, just changes in our, uh, in our hobby, it's, it's inevitable. So we want to be ahead in terms of propagating corals. The, the idea of being able to have an aquarium set up which is entirely uh, creatures that never existed, that never actually lived on the reef, so fully captive red uh, coral fish, it's one of the things that you know I'm very interested in. And, so. and, and speaking of fish, you guys are uh, sort of pioneers in, in the fact that you only do local fish. You don't import any fish, correct? Well, really, technically, our policy is that we only sell fish from uh, sustainable fisheries. Yeah. So uh, properly managed sustainable fisheries. And there's certainly some uh, countries around the world that we don't consider uh, uh, their fisheries are sustainable, so we can certainly avoid those. Uh, and and in, in one way, it's easy to only sell Australian fish because that's 
uh, as far as we're concerned, you know, the, the most obviously sustainable uh, fishery. Um, however, uh, there are other fishes around the world that we would consider selling, and Hawaii is probably the, the example. We'd certainly consider selling uh, fish in Hawaii, but uh, we probably need to look into it more. And for us, it's, it's easiest just to sell Australian fish, partly because they, they don't go through the stress of the quarantine period. Yeah. And, um, and, and there are some fish, some species that really suffer in that quarantine period. Um, fish that don't just take the pellets and such. But there are certainly some uh, imported fish that, that, are, that are pretty good at getting through that quarantine. And I'm thinking of yellow tanks more than anything. But, uh, and I, I consider them to be uh, a fish that would be ethical to sell. I think that their survival rates are pretty good. But there's so many uh, imported fish that we would never want to sell because we don't consider it ethical putting them through the quarantine period. And there's uh, the survival rates are very, very poor for some species. And, and I guess it, it, it helps give your customers a better experience as well because they're not getting a fish that they are getting a fish that has been through less stress, it's less likely to have a parasite or a disease, it's going to have better survivability rate. And ultimately, that's one of the biggest reasons people exit the hobby is because they've had an unfortunate event in their tank, they lose their fish and they. With, without a doubt, both Andrew and myself have worked in other aquarium stores. And uh, we see the, the loss rate of our fish here, and it, it's incredibly low um, compared to other places we've worked. It's incredibly low. The fish that we sell are particularly healthy, but I also put that down to our management of the fish. And, um, you know, we've got a quarantine system yeah. um, which is off site, so we can move fish there. And some fish will quarantine for people. Uh, I told you about a lipstick tank that we quarantine for a person, um, one of our customers. Um, but yeah, also we've got very strong UV sterilizers on the systems here. Yeah. Um, but it does it does make it easier to lose less and uh, selling fish that we have uh, confidence in the health um, makes it a lot easier for us. Yeah. I think the, the passion you guys show that's so evident in the shop and the practices of your fish keeping and coral keeping and propagation it, it speaks for itself that you're getting the, the best quality service, the best quality um, livestock. Um, and therefore, the best chances of success when, when, when using a source like yourselves or a marine fish. And that's, that's what it comes down to for us. We really want to try and give our customers the best chance of having a successful tank because not only you know it's nice for our customers, but it means that our customers are going to come back and spend more money and, and buy more uh, fish and corals. Yeah. So, you know, we make a point of not selling fish that we think are uh, not healthy or up to a standard that uh, you know, is going to survive in, in their tank. Yeah. So, well, I know that you've had an incredibly busy day. I'm, I'm so thankful that you were able to take the time to, to meet with me. And no worries at all. Town and, and, on yeah, such a hot day. day. On such a hot day. day. Um, so to finish up, I'm just going to rapid fire three questions to you. Yep. So favorite fish? Uh, choose yeah, your favorite yeah. child. It has to be one. Uh, I'm gonna say Genocanthus angels, uh, any of the species, but I'm gonna go. I can only go down a genus level, so sure. Genocanthus. Genocanthus. Yep. Favorite coral. Montiflora. Montiflora. Yeah. All right. And if you were one dream fish that currently is not able to breed in captivity, that should not be able to breed in captivity, what would you like that to be? Dolphin fish. Yep. All right. Dolphin fish in a 50,000 liter uh, acrylic water tank. I think that would be my dream, my dream tank, my dream fish. Uh, that can be the next upgrade for the shop. Yeah, right? yeah it will be. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, well thanks again, Tam. It's been no an absolute pleasure. Thanks for coming to see us. Yeah. But anyway, that's all, all for today. Check out Cam and Anya's YouTube channel if you're not already subscribed. You should be already. I mean, come on, you probably found me through their channel. Um, in the recommended bar on the side there on YouTube. These guys are the absolute best of the Australian race scene on YouTube. Um, and also, while you're there, if you're not subscribed to me, give it a go, the button's down there. My name is Marcus, this is Cam, and you've been watching Reef on YouTube channel. Bye now.